Hello Year 7, it's Miss Bun and I'm just going to go through um, some concepts that will help you for your work this week. So food chains and food webs and I'm going to explain some of it to you and introduce some of the key terms that you're going to be using as well. Um, so hopefully you can watch this video and it'll help you out with those tasks. Okay, so first of all, a food chain and I'm going to start off with um, some grass. So some grass is there first of all in my food chain. And um, after the, the grass, we need to go to the thing that eats that grass. So in this case, um, we've got a zebra that eats the grass. And then something that eats the zebra is the lion. Okay, so really sort of nice, easy, standard food chain. And what we're missing here are the arrows okay so first of all we've got the grasses and they get eaten by um, the zebras so the zebra eats those grasses so what we do we put the arrow in that direction towards the eater basically so the um the zebra there is the thing that's eating um, and that's the way the arrow goes then the zebra gets eaten by the lion and again the arrow goes that, that way so you can think of the arrow as saying gets eaten by the grass, gets eaten by the zebra, the zebra gets eaten by the lion. But actually, what's really happening here is we're looking at a flow of energy. We're looking at energy moving through a food chain. So if you think about that, the grass and the plants, first of all, they have the energy that gets taken in by that zebra. The zebra takes the energy into their body when they chew up that grass and then that energy can be used for whatever the zebra does when it runs around, when it has a baby and when it keeps its body warm, all those sorts of things. Then the lion eats the zebra and takes energy from it, just like we all take energy from our food. Gets energy from the zebra and then again uses it for all those different sorts of processes in its body. So the arrows, they do show what eats what, and they do show that this organism eats that organism. But what we say is that the arrows in a food chain show the flow of energy. So this is a, a food chain and the arrows show the flow of energy. Something else that you could add to this food chain and to all food chains really, is the source of energy to this food chain. So where does the energy come from in the first place? Well, if you go back, and try and find where it comes from we've got the plants as the first thing all the food chains that you'll see and um, certainly in year seven all the food chains that you'll see they will all start with a plant and that plant has got its energy from the sun so the sun we call the ultimate source of energy there is always a plant here then that gets eaten and then that animal gets eaten um, and it can go on again from there. So what we could say, and we don't add this into food chains, but we could say, there's the sun, that's the source of energy, and then the energy flows through the plant and then to those different animals that eat, um, eat each other through the food chain. We don't draw the sun on because the sun's always there. So if you asked, and uh, this is a common question, what do the arrows mean? The arrows show the flow of energy. What's the ultimate source of energy? Well, that's always the sun. The sun is the, where the energy comes from for the plants. Okay, so we always start with plants. And there's certain names for these different um, organisms in a food chain. And there's names as well for their positions in the food chain and the role that they play. So in this case, we've got the grass. I said there's always a plant at the start and that plant at the start has got a name, which is that it is the producer. So although the energy comes from the sun, the sun's obviously um, not here on Earth. What brings the energy here on Earth and puts it into the food chain is the plant. So we call that the producer because it's like it produces the energy for the food chain. It converts it from light into a chemical energy, if you've done the energy topic. So we have the producer, first of all. Then the next one along is called um, a consumer. And if you think of a consumer, if you've heard that word used, 
just in normal everyday life. Consume is to eat something, to consume, or sometimes like shopping is called consuming. So um, consuming is to, to take something on and to, to have something. So actually, this is a producer and everything after that will be a consumer because they're all eating. This one's not eating, it's got an energy from the sun. They're all eating, they're all consuming and consumers. So we have the producer and then the consumers. And just like with primary school, secondary school, those words mean primary, like the first, secondary is the second. We have a primary consumer and a secondary consumer. So I'll put those in as well. So primary. Primary consumer, and then the lion is our secondary consumer. We know that nothing eats a lion. Certainly nothing will chase and kill um, and catch a lion to eat it. So as well as being the secondary consumer, the lion in this case is also called the top consumer. There's no um, nothing eating the lion after that point. Okay. So we've got the producer, primary consumer and secondary consumer. There are some other labels that we can put in here as well. So the primary consumer, because um, it is the one that gets chased and killed and caught and eaten. The other word that we can give to that, and you should have heard this word before, is prey. So the primary consumer will usually also be a prey organism because um, there is something that's going to kill and catch and eat it. The plant doesn't get killed and, and chased and caught and eaten. Um, it's a plant. So that's just a producer. We're not, we don't call plants prey. Then the secondary consumer, this is now, if that word's pre um, prey, then this word here will refer to that one. The one that chases and hunts and kills and catches, that one's called a predator. So you know that word, and predator refers to normally larger animals, animals with sharp teeth and claws. If you've done your adaptations work, um, you'll know about um, adaptations of predators. So um, animals that are good at hunting and killing and catching other animals, they're the predators. So the main labels are these ones, producer, prime consumer, secondary consumer. But we also have these predator and prey relationships here as well. I'll give you one more set of keywords that we can use as well. Um, and that refers to what things eat. And I think you might have heard of these before. So if an animal only eats plants and won't eat any kind of animals at all, it's like the vegetarian of the animal kingdom, then that is called a herbivore. Okay, so we've got a herbivore here as well. And um, I would be asking you now, if, if we were in class, can you guess um, what the word is for ones that just only eat meat? They don't eat um, plants. And that, you might know some of this, some of you, is carnivore. So this lion wouldn't see a nice um, tree with a nice bit of fruit on and decide to start chomping on that it's a carnivore it eats meat and um, so herbivores eat plants carnivores eat meat animals that um, can eat um, meat and also plants they're called omnivores so we've not got an omnivore in this food chain but I'll just write omnivore for you and um, I'll write it down here in brackets um, So they're the ones that will eat um, plants and animals, okay? I'm an omnivore and lots of you will be too. So the main points from this are that you always, always start with a plant and that plant is called the producer. Um, and then something will eat that plant, take energy from it and the energy is flowing through the food chain um, and we show this by the arrows. Then that is the primary consumer, the first one to eat the first one that's eating the producer is called a primary consumer and then when you go to something that eats a primary consumer it's called a secondary consumer the energy moves through the food chain and then the last one is also called the top consumer the source of energy for all this is the sun 
because producers can convert light energy into um, chemical energy that can be eaten um, and passed on through a food chain. So we use these words for um, producer, primary consumer and secondary consumer tell us what stage of the food chain we're at. Okay, that's what they tell us. These words can be at different points in food chains as well. If I had a slightly longer food chain, there might be um, animals that are predators and prey, and I'll talk to you about that in a moment. So you can have prey that get caught and killed and eaten. Plants are not prey, um, but the primary consumer usually is. Then the predator is the one that does the killing and the catching and the eating. Herbivores only eat plants. Carnivores only eat other animals, insects, meat basically. Omnivores can eat plants and animals. Okay. Now, what happens then if we introduce another organism that here is also living in the same area and eating that same grass? Okay, so I've got a gazelle now. That gazelle also can be eaten by the lion. Okay. So what I've got here now is not just a food chain anymore. I've now got a food web. If it's just a straight line of animals and plants, that's a food chain. But I've introduced now a second branch of this. And so I've now I've started to make it into a food web. With food chains, we write them across the page. With food webs, we start at the bottom and work our way up. So that's what I'll show you now. So I'll take all this off and we'll go for a food web. So a food web, um, they are more difficult than food chains, but there's nothing that's harder to understand. All it is, is that sometimes it can get a little bit more confusing. You have to be quite careful um, and work it through and um, understand what everything is and what everything um, is eating and just to sort of try and think it through piece by piece. So first of all, I'm going to put on our producer, which is our grass. And just like before, uh, just like before, we have um, the zebra eats the grass, and the gazelle eats the grass as well. The lion, eats them both. Let's give them a bit more space. There they are. Okay. And so we don't get confused. I'm going to draw these um, relationships as we go. Okay, so we call these um, arrows and these different um, organisms that eat, feed off each other their feeding relationships. Okay. So first of all, that, those grasses do get eaten by zebra, also by gazelle. And those two animals are eaten by lions. Okay, so it's exactly what we've just done, except now because I've realised I'm doing a food web, I've had to put the producer at the bottom. So we always have a producer at the bottom. Okay. I'm also going to put, um, this one just represents general sort of trees and shrubs um, that might be, we're doing a bit of an African plains habitat here, aren't we? So out in the savannah, out in Africa, and, and if you imagine those sort of, yellowy grassy dusty sort of landscapes with the occasional trees patch that looks a bit like this there are some watering holes you do get those sort of areas but a lot of it's dry sort of grass and shrubland so loads of different grasses shrubs and trees if you've seen um it's a typical one for seeing on a documentary and you see david attenborough or something like that and the lions on his hunt so that sort of habitat i want you to imagine so the gazelle certainly will be eaten from the trees and shrubs. I think a, a zebra would mainly go for the grasses, but they could eat some of those as well. So I could put, um, I'll put that on. They could eat some of those trees and shrubs as well. Okay. So I'm just going to add a few more organisms into this now. So um, first of all, feeding on the grasses. I've got just generally insects. I know it's really tiny, but there's just insects there. Um, so you can see I've um, just got one little insect just to show that. So the insect um, here, they feed off plants, um, different plants that are around. We're not getting too specific with species and things at this stage, but those insects can feed off the plants. 
I've also got here then um, a little mouse. And the mouse will be feeding off plants and the grasses, but also will eat insects that it finds as well. So I've got a little bit of the food web here that's getting a little bit more complicated. A mouse isn't going to be our top predator, so we're going to have a bit more going on over here on this side. I'm also going to pop um, a small bird in here. So this isn't a, a huge sort of hunting bird. It's a small bird, um, and this one might also eat um, some of the plants and things, and also some of the insects. Okay. Then on the next level, I'm going to put in a um, snake. And a larger bird here as well. So we've got our little bird here and then um, a bigger one um, above that. Okay, so uh, the snake would eat um, small birds. Probably um, a lot of the time would eat their eggs, but would eat small birds. Would eat insects that it finds and would eat little things like um, mice and things like that as well. The larger bird then getting quite complicated over here, would eat those ones. Okay. Then I've just got a couple more to put in. Um, I'm going to add in um, an elephant. I've only got a baby elephant here to save space. But elephants, because they're so large, they are quite lucky in, in being so big because what it means is that they can eat from the trees and the shrubs. They'll eat a bit of the grass as well. So they are herbivores. But because they are quite quite big, um, and the adults are quite big, and they live in those herds, they don't really get bothered generally by these sorts of animals. So most of the time, they wouldn't um, prey upon those. So we'll leave that one out. And then I'm going to add another um, predator up here. So this one's a cheetah. And the cheetah is going to eat uh, the zebra and the gazelle. And yeah, we'll, we'll leave it at that. We don't want to be more complicated. So we have got quite a complex food web here, but hopefully you can see how um, there can be a simple food chain. We've still got our simple food chain in here. Grass, um, a zebra, and then a lion. So that's our food chain. But in any kind of habitat, there are lots of animals and lots of plants that have all different feeding relationships and will relate to each other in that way. So we have herbivores, always at the bottom of our food web, sorry, not herbivores, um, producers, always at the bottom of our food web. So producers there to start it off. They take their energy from the sun. And the arrows show the way that the, that energy from the sun, which has been converted in those plants, can then flow through those other animals. So let's try and find, first of all, the primary consumers. And I'm just going to, in red, right here, primary consumer. Okay, so the primary consumers are all of the ones who eat the producers. We've got two producers here. So is the snake a primary consumer? No, because it doesn't directly um, eat that grass there. The mouse is, I'm going to get, put a little circle around there. The insects are, the zebra is, the gazelle, and the elephant. All primary consumers. Okay. The um, producers, which I probably should have put in first, so I'll just put that here, producer. Always the plants. So we've got two producers in this case. There's the plants, the grass, the trees, the shrubs. Okay. Then we found all the primary consumers. Let's look for the secondary consumers. Secondary consumers are the ones that eat the primary consumers. Okay. So the secondary consumers I'll do in blue. So anything that's going to eat those um, those primary. So we've got a secondary consumer, a snake, got this small bird here, um, the cheetah, 
the lion. Okay, now it might be that if the cheetah had a chance, it would get hold of this larger bird and would eat that. That seems um that seems like it could happen. But with these food webs and food chains, when you're doing questions and when you're doing tasks about them, you don't have to know this information. You don't have to try and think oh, what eats what. They will tell you the information. So in this case, I'm, I'm not sure if a cheetah might eat some of these other things here. And um, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to leave that for now. But you would, um, we don't want to make this one too complicated, but you would be given that sort of information. So don't start pondering and thinking, oh, will that eat that or not? You don't have to worry about that. OK. Then we've actually got primary, secondary. Third one is called a tertiary consumer. We've actually got a tertiary consumer here. I wouldn't really say that this is a top consumer um, more than these other two because they are definitely sort of um, large predators in the area. It's just the way that these sort of smaller food chains here have worked out that there's lots of stages. If you had to pick out a food chain within this food web, so sometimes questions say that, to pick out a food chain, start with the producer and then just follow the arrows. So I could go um, tree, gazelle, um, cheetah, or I could go... Um, grass, insect, small bird, large bird, or I could say grass, um, zebra, cheetah. It doesn't matter. If you're asked to pick out a food chain um, within that food web, you just follow it through. Okay. So last thing is just to have a look at some um, predator and prey relationships. And we've got um, one here that I wanted to show you before. So um, the producers are at the bottom, the primary consumers are not predators of those plants and um, plants don't run away so they are prey all of those ones are prey oh sorry apart from the elephant so the elephant's the only one that's not prey because i said that generally they don't get bothered because they're so large so that's a primary consumer but it's not prey no one's eating it these ones are all prey because they all get eaten and these ones are all predators because they go and catch and kill we could also call the snake a predator and a prey so some organisms, if they're, particularly if they're secondary consumers, can be predators and prey because they're chased and killed by some and they will chase and kill others. OK, so I hope that's helpful and um, I hope it's not too much information. But even if you just pick out um, most of that or as much of that as you can, um, then that will help you and in, in work through your tasks and look at the other resources as well. Just remember, um, the sun provides the energy. It's always a plant at the start. Food chain goes across, a food web goes upwards, um, and it's basically saying what eats what, but the arrows do show the flow of energy, um, and you've got these keywords to use and to remember as well.